Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Good evening, everyone. We just want to thank you all for coming as we come to start the beginning of our ladies' conference. Amen. Tonight, bless the Lord. Wait at the altar. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Amen. God is a good God, and indeed, he's worthy to be praised. Come on, give God some praise tonight. Amen. Give him all the glory that belongs to him tonight. It is only because of him while we're here tonight. Amen. Amen. Only because of him while we are alive today. And we give him the glory, give him the praise. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite you to, as we open up in prayer, we're going to invite sister Evelyn was but I'm gonna ask you all to stand as we sing we place you at the highest place but you are the great high priest oh we bless his holy name we place you at the highest place
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We're going to ask Mr. McNeil to come at this time with the scripture reading. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your holy Come on, let's bless the Lord, saints. Bless the Lord, ye his saints. Amen. Praise God. We are standing on holy ground tonight. Praise God. And we have received a command from the Lord. Amen. He says, you be holy, even as I am holy. Praise God. So tonight we are just so privileged to be here in this uh, women's annual service. Bless the Lord. I am not Sister Diana McFadden, but I am going to read the scripture, um, which comes from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 28 through 31. If you would kindly stand as we read the word of God. Amen. Our theme tonight is wait on the Lord. Amen. And to us that can mean many things. And we pray, praise God, for our speakers this week, uh, tonight and Sunday and tomorrow, that we would fully understand what it means to wait amen. on the Lord. Say amen. amen. Praise God. Okay, so let's go to Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verse 28 to 31. I am going to read, and you will kindly follow. Amen. Praise God. 40 and 28 says and reads thus has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth faint not neither is he weary amen neither is there no searching of his understanding scripture says in verse 29 he gives the power to the faint and to them that have no might he increased strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. Here's the kicker, it says, but they that wait, be encouraged to wait tonight, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So even though you get fainted and you feel tired and you feel hot, God promises to Renew your strength if you would wait. Amen. He says that they would mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So we have a great promise tonight from the Lord. If we would wait, he promised to renew, renew us. He promised to strengthen us. He promised to rejuvenate us. He promised to recondition us. If we would wait. Bless the name of the Lord. And we have one other portion of scripture, which comes from the 27th division of the Psalm, verse 14. Reads thus. It's not a suggestion. Hear me, it's not a suggestion. It is command. It says, wait I say on the Lord. Amen. Let's read that together, can we? Everybody with me, it's on the screen. Can we put it on the screen, Sister Naomi, or whoever is uh, doing the, the video there? Verse 14. Amen. Say amen as we wait. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'll be ready here. Let's go. Let's say it together. Wait on the Lord. And what? Be of good courage. And what? And he shall strengthen thine heart. What else? Wait, I say, on the Lord. So if we get nothing else tonight from these services, tomorrow, I mean tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday, no matter what it takes, don't let the enemy, praise God, cause you to be impatient. Amen. They that wait upon the Lord are going to be strengthened. You're going to be renewed. You're going to be given courage. Amen. So therefore, I encourage you tonight to wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he will, there's a promise, there's a promise, he will strengthen your heart. Wait, David says, I say, on the Lord. So we bless the Lord for the reading of the word tonight. Let's honor it by saying, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be, world without end, amen. You may be seated. And since I'm here, I'm going to do the welcome. 
Praise God. Amen. It's been omitted from the program. So we're going to get ready tonight for the welcome. Are you happy to be here? Yes. Are you anticipating anything from the Lord tonight? Are you in expectation? I know it's hot. But don't let the heat, praise God, distract you from the presence of God. His presence is here. Amen? And we're not going to let that keep us from giving God what he justly deserves. We honor the Lord tonight for our pastor, Andrew. Thank God for the ministers here. Bless God. Our musicians who are here. And most of all, we thank God for our speaker. Thank God for uh, Dr. Powell, who is our speaker tonight. And we are certainly anticipating a word from the lips of the Lord. Say amen. 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 And not only are we anticipating, not only are we anxious to hear what God has to say, but we want to be not just hear us, we want to be doers as well. Amen. amen. Say, I promise to do what the Lord says. Say I it. I promise to not just be a hearer. I, to I can't hear you. I promise to not just be a hearer but a doer of the word of God. Amen. Amen. Not what I say, not what pastor says, but what the word of the Lord declares. We are going to do that. That's what the children of Israel told uh, Moses. What the Lord says to do, we will do. And that's what we're going to do tonight. Amen. So we thank God tonight for those of you who are here. Thank God for our visitors. Come on, let's clap our hands and praise God. We're so appreciative if you came. Thank you for bearing with us and the and the humid humidity, but it'll be okay. I know some place that's hotter. Oh you don't want to go there. I'd rather deal with this right here than to go to that other place. Hell, it's cold. Amen. So we're not going to let the, the mild uh, temperature, Sister Hard. We're not going to let that stop us. We okay, come in. No. Well, I came with one focus. And listen, let me tell you how I pray. If I'm the only one in church tonight, I would bless the Lord. Because I know what he's done for me. God has done miraculous things for me. Praise God. I see, I got a miracle right there. I'm looking at every day of my life. I see the faithfulness of God. I see the handiwork of God. I see the miraculous power of God. When I look at my child right there who was near death. So if nobody wants to praise him, I've got a lot to praise God for. Come on, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. I wish I had somebody who would stand on your feet and let's bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He is so worthy to be praised. He deserves our praise. The songwriter said he deserves it. All of our lives, God has been faithful. Amen. He's never failed. Don't you think he deserves your worship? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we welcome the presence of God. Hallelujah. With others' presence, you may be seen. With others' presence, we're nothing. So we're thankful that he chose to, uh, praise God, grace us with his presence tonight. And we want you to enjoy the presence of the Lord. Most of all, we want you to embrace the word of God. The word of God is what we need in this day and this hour. We need to be empowered. We need to be transformed. We need to be uh, become influential women of God. And the only way that can happen is if we allow the word of God to have its free course. Amen. It's free course in our lives. And that we pledge to do tonight. Say amen. amen. We bless the Lord. So thank you for coming. I see, praise God, my dear co-worker and friend, uh, Sister uh, McKay, if I can give a hand. Bless God. Amen. Thank God for a couple of young ladies that came from New Beginning. Y'all be stand up, girls. What a blessing. These, these were kids back and back a few years ago. Amen. And I think Lady Patrice was their youth minister. Am I correct? Isn't that nice to see them following their, their former president? Thank God for you, young ladies. Pray you, uh, praise God, receive something tonight. Amen. Thank God again for our visitors. I think uh, these ladies came, and gentlemen, came with Dr. Powell. Wow. Let's give him a hand. We can do better than that word of faith and praise. Yeah. Hallelujah, that's right. I love that. Come on, let's stand up and give him a rousing round of applause. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for praising us with your presence tonight. Amen. So we bless the Lord tonight.
tonight. We welcome his presence. We know he is here. If he is here, I'm okay with that. Doesn't matter who else is not here, but as long as the presence of God is here, because I know that in his presence, his word declares that in his presence there is not just joy, but there is a fullness. Anybody expecting a fullness tonight? Praise God for it. Amen. So while we're here, I'm done with that. One more thing, let's just do the offering. Praise God. Let's just uh, put our, our hands in our pockets and we want to be a blessing to the ministry tonight. Be a blessing to the ladies. Praise God. We pray that the Lord has spoken to your hearts uh, as to what you have given. The Bible says, let every man purpose in his heart what he should give. So what do you think the Lord deserves tonight? I hope he deserves your very best. Amen? So we're going to dig deep tonight and give God the very best offering. Can we have... Uh, Minister, we, we, we need you. We need you guys. We can't do this alone. We need you. <laughs> Alright, so our Minister Greg is going to bring the offering table and we're going to rise to our feet and bring our offering so we can move on with the program. Amen. Sister Sophie, can you help us with a quick little chorus so we can all rise up and give us as quick as let's be expeditious with this. Amen. Praise God. Come on, say amen, church. Amen. amen. Ready? That's a good one. That's right. To the house. Come on, let's rise and bring our home.
Let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. We worship you. We give you praise. Thank you for your goodness. Right now, we're going to ask Minister G to bless our offering. But right before she does so, I wanted to acknowledge the Facebook um, the platform there. If you uh, would like to give, of course, uh, there are ways on the screen that you can uh, donate, and we would certainly appreciate it. God bless you. Right now, we're going to have the Minister G to bless our offering. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, you are great and you are greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we come tonight with our sacrifice of praise. God, we pray tonight, God, that our sacrifice, God, will be well pleasing to you, Father. We honor you tonight, mighty God. We just magnify you. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you, God, for everyone who is gathered here tonight, Lord God. And as we come, mighty God, we come to worship you, God, in spirit and in truth. Yes, Father, we come tonight, Lord God, for a fresh encounter tonight, mighty God. We come for a fresh touch tonight, Lord. Father God, I pray tonight that you will touch us individually. Touch us collectively tonight, Father, as we give you praise. Mighty God, we thank you, God, for the gifts that your people have given tonight. Lord, we pray that you continue to pour out your blessing upon each and every one tonight, God. Blessings, God, that we will not have room, mighty God, to contain it. Oh, Father, we thank you, God, that you are the blessing, God. We thank you, God, that your blessings, God, mighty God, they are not limited. But, oh, God, your word declares that your blessings, God, it will chase us down and overtake us. Oh, God, and so tonight we come, God, for a running over. We come for an outpouring, mighty God. Oh, touch us tonight, God, we pray. Touch us, oh, God, we pray tonight. Oh, we thank you, oh, God, for what is received, God. We pray, God, that it will be used, oh, God, for the furtherance, oh, God, of your kingdom here on earth. We give you praise, glory, and honor, and we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We turn this over to Sister Martha. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister McNair. Oh, we want to give God the glory. We're going to continue to worship him. Amen. God is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. At this time, I'm going to ask Old Lady Patrice to come with the introduction of our guest speaker. And after... Um, after the singing of our uh, selection, I'm going to ask you all to stand to your feet as you receive the woman of God. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord as we, as she speak as thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, bless his holy name. Praise the Lord. 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 Bless his holy name. Is the Lord worthy tonight? Yes, he's worthy. Is he worthy to be praised? Is he worthy to be lifted up? Is he worthy to be magnified? Amen. 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 I know it's a little warm in here, but thank God that we're able to gather in here and give the Lord all his due. Amen. Amen. Regardless of the temperature, no matter what's going on, we're just delighted that we can come and bless the Lord. Amen. 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 And we just love our theme for our women's conference, Wait at the Altar. Amen. Because we know that we're going to have an encounter with a living God. Amen. Amen. And we can just have Dr. Powell come on up. Yes. It's my delight and it's my privilege to introduce our guest speaker tonight. Amen. None other than Dr. Powell. She's no stranger to us. Such a powerful, dynamic woman of God. Amen. She's been our conference speaker in the past and we're just so delighted that she accepted our invitation again this year. And so her bio is in our program and please read, read along with me. And it reads, Dr. Teresa Powell has been used by God to share his word over quite a few years. God has used her mightily on the mission field in several countries as well as locally as an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, a counselor, a conference speaker, and a church planter alongside her late husband. She has not only served the church, but has also served the wider community a 
as a public educator of excellence, having been recognized with numerous awards. Her life, as well as her ministry, has made a major impact on many communities, organizations, and individual lives. We feel confident, amen, amen, that as she avails herself to God in this conference, that God will use her in a mighty use way yes, to lead Lord. us to higher heights Hallelujah. and deeper depths in Him, and that our lives will be strongly impacted by the Word of God coming through her. Amen. 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 And I also see her daughter here, um, Sister Carrie Ann Powell. Can you stand? Amen. I don't know if you go all the way into the country to be here tonight, but we're just so delighted to have you. Um, is Dr. Carrie Ann Powell? Is it Dr. No? Okay. <laughs> but I'm sure it's on its way. But, um, Sister Carrie Ann Paul has also done a conference for us um, some time back, a ladies' conference. So we're so just delighted to have Dr. Powell and Sister Paul and her guests come tonight. Can you just stand one more time? Amen. Thank you, Dr. Powell. We're so delighted to have you all tonight. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming and all you wonderful saints. Amen. So delighted to have you. Um, and even Jakari and Chastity, delighted to have them. They just warm my heart tonight to see them coming. Amen. Yes, Amen. And I just want to share this. Amen. Yes. Amen. And I just love to share this scripture because it keeps our minds in perspective when the word is coming forth. And it's Romans chapter 10. It says, and how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? My God. And how shall they hear without a preacher? My Lord. And we have a preacher here tonight. Yes, Amen. We do. Yes, and it goes on to say, and how shall they preach except they, sh they be sent? Yeah. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace Praise and bring glad tidings of good things. And so, ladies, Help me welcome and give her a warm welcome, Dr. Powell. So let's receive this anointed servant as God and let's open our hearts to be tremendously blessed. Amen. But before she comes, I believe we're going to have a selection. God. Yes, amen. So whoever's coming, let's give the selection. And when Dr. Powell comes, let's rest on our feet and honor the God and this mighty woman. Amen. 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 God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord shall
just greet you in the name of the Lord. And special greetings to a very special group of participants or media audience. God bless you. Whatever platform you're on tonight, and wherever in the world you are, Amen. whatever part of the world you are viewing us Amen. from, I just want to say welcome and am thankful to God that you chose to join us tonight. Amen. And I'm trusting that all the blessings that are here in our, right here with us in our location, they're right there with you wherever you're participating with us. Amen. So God bless you. Amen. You know, I am so very grateful to God for this privilege of coming to you. And I'm convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt, uh -huh. beyond the shadow of a doubt, oh that there is a word here for you tonight. Amen. A very special word here for you tonight. Amen. All I'm asking you to do is just tune in, take in, tune in totally to God. Yes. Draw in the wanderings of your mind if you if you saw your thoughts going here and there and everywhere. Yes. Pull them in. Yes. My God. Make it intentional. Say, I am going to hear the voice of God tonight. And guess what? Don't try to tune into my squeaky voice. Or because you're going to hear my theological blunders, my grammatical errors. But tune in to the voice of God. God speaks to us in our heart. You, when you hear the words coming in, that's my words. But God is going to transform those words into what he wants to say into your spirit. So please listen carefully with your spirit. Tune into God and listen in your spirits to God. I am praying that tonight will be 
that night when you definitely, totally tune in and God will give you a word that he never gave to you before. We hear words over and over from the word of God. But God has a way of using the same word you've heard a hundred times and turn it into the rhema word yes, yes. to make a change in your life. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So tonight, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that there's a rhema word Amen. for you tonight. Amen. Tune in for that rhema word. Amen. I'm grateful to God for the sensitivity to his voice of Minister McNair and her team who waited on him for the theme and focus of this conference. Wait at the altar. And I'm telling you, this is the key to a victorious Christian life. This is the key to life. Waiting on God. Amen. So by the end of tonight's service, you will have gone one round higher in God. Because you're going to understand what it means to wait on God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, here are your people. Here, is, here are your words. Here is this lump of clay that you've chosen to use tonight. Father, everything is in your hand. And God, you speak to us. Speak to us through your word tonight. And let us tune in and hear you loud and clear. We thank you, thank you in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our scripture for tonight, as you've already noticed, yeah. is Psalm 27, verse 14. Psalm 27, verse 14. And I think it's going to be popping up on the screen for you. Psalm 27, verse 14. And I would love for us to read it together again. Because... There's nothing like hearing the word of God out loud, even when you read it or somebody else reads it, but it really is marital bones. Let's begin. Wait. Let's read it out together, please. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall Strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. That's heavy and that's powerful. Let let's on let let's go ahead and unravel that and see what's coming out of it. As I brood on these words over this verse of scripture, and as I waited on God for the word for tonight. For hearing, trust me, I was utterly surprised at the simplicity of the message that God downloaded in my spirit. Okay, okay. It's a simple message. Amen. It has no, it's, I have to say, Lord, this is so simple. It, believe me, there's absolutely nothing highfalutin about it. It's very basic. Very, amen. Yet, it's very deep okay. and demands our total attention. Yes. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, he will strengthen thy heart. What does it mean? to wait on God. What does it mean to wait 
at the altar. It very simply but profoundly means not making a single move until you get directions from God. Just freeze until you get directions from God. In what? In every single thing you do. I know this is new to some people. You don't realize waiting on God is in everything, all our lives, pervasive. Every single thing we do. Have you ever noticed the armed forces? Let's say the military and how they're standing, or the police force, they're standing as if they're not breathing. You, I, I'm sure if a fly purchase on them, they wouldn't do a thing about it. They are absolutely still. Absolutely still waiting on their command. And when they, their command gives them a command, they move promptly, promptly and precisely. They do exactly what they are told to do. Now, that is exactly what our psalmist David is saying to us. Wait on the Lord, be so still. Somebody would look at you and think you're not even breathing. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wait right there on the Lord until he gives you a command. A command. My God. Wait on him. Now, the Bible says... In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. And so when I say to you that it's every single thing, I want that to sink in, brothers and sisters. Because we say that a lot, wait on the Lord, but we're really not thinking sometimes that it's in every single thing. And here, here what we have here. In all your ways, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 56, verse 5 to 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. And if you want to turn in your Bibles to that, because I really want you to get it. Yes. Amen. It says, in all, it says, trust in the Lord yes. with all of your heart yes, lean not to your own understanding oh, but in all yes. your ways oh, acknowledge him yes. and he will direct your path Amen. Amen. are we getting that yes. In all your ways. Yes, Did it say in the big ways, in the big decisions? No, in all. Praise God. And I'm sure that some people are now saying, does it mean if I go to the store, I have to wait on God to see if I should go to the store, go to the supermarket, if I should clean my house, if I should do this, and oh, I should do that. Oh. And I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, please get that in your spirit. That it is in every single thing that we do. You see, our lives are all decisions we make in our lives form another thing to make another decision. If they all add up. And every little thing is a building block. Okay. So if down here we are doing our own thing, yeah. 
not waiting on God, not asking him for directions. When the big thing comes up here, we're probably already out of whack. Down here. We're, we, for example, I know some, quite a few of you in here are immigrants. Now, you would not be here in the job you're in, doing what you're doing, had you gone to the embassy the day you did, and filled out the form the time you did, right. and it's all had up. You got on the plane the time you did. Right. You're here in the job you are in. You're here serving God the way you're serving uh -huh. Him. Notice how everything in our lives is a chain reaction. And hence, I want us to get it. Because that took me a long time to get and understand. That is every single thing that counts. Every decision that counts. I'm aware that right now I could lose about 80% of you. Because it sounds sometimes it sounds like nonsense. Am I going to wait on God for stupid little things? And so maybe I'm losing you right now. But I want to draw back your mind in. And follow me. And see where God is leading you. <laughs> One could probably say, I thought it was the prophets who hear from God. Because God directs us by speaking to us. He speaks to us. One might say, I thought it was the prophets or those mighty men and women of God, wherever they are or whoever they are, that God speaks to. But I want to submit to you, my brothers and my sisters, that God speaks to every individual here tonight. You don't have to hear God's voice through somebody else. God speaks to us. And God wants to direct your path by speaking to you, by giving you specific instructions as to what to do. The only way we can do that is when we wait and listen. Wait and listen to his voice. Amen. He most, as we said, he most speaks to us through our spirits. Are you willing tonight to tune your spirit into God to hear his voice? Hear what Jesus says himself in John chapter 10, verse 27. He says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. They follow me. So are you his sheep? So are you listening to his voice? Do you know his voice? Do you know his voice? As we progress in our Christian walk, we learn the voice of God. There might be some young believers here who say, how can I know his voice? I cannot figure out how to hear God's voice. But like I said, as you progress in your Christian walk, you know the voice of God. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Waiting on God entails being very still. Listening to the next command or the next set of directions. And like we said, we're just like those soldiers waiting on exactly what 
to do. Yes. Hear what Jeremiah says. You see, we don't know what to do. We really don't. Uh -huh. And some of us, we think we know it all and we have our lives all planned out. Oh my God. And we think we know. But hear what Jeremiah 10 verse 23 says. 10 verse 23. Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man to direct his own steps. My God. Man, we cannot direct our own steps. It's not in us. It's not in us. And hear me very, very well on that. If therefore behoves us to wait at the altar for direction in stillness. Isaiah 30 verse 15 says, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, shall be your strength. And because we do not know the way, because we cannot direct our own steps, God, our Heavenly Father, uh -huh. the creator of the universe, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He has a master plan for your life. Yes. Can you can your mind maintain that? Can your mind hold that? That God, the creator of the universe, who hung the stars in place. My God, hallelujah. Thank you. That that same God has a master plan for your life. He has a master plan. That's hard to swallow sometimes. You don't, you're saying, but God, you have a whole universe to take care of. How can you zoom in on me and have a plan for me individually? But that's our God. He says in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you. Do you believe that? Do you, can you conceive that? Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. That God has a plan for you. You. My God, my God, my God. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you in any way. Plans to give you hope. And a future. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord. It's not just a plan for today, but it's a plan, it's a strategy. It is a master plan for you from now to the end of your life. Amen. So he has that plan for you. Please get that in your heads. Please understand that. That God has a plan for you. Yes, thank you, Lord. Isn't all of this knowledge worth waiting on God for? Wow. Since God is the God of the universe. He's the great I am. He's I am that I am. I am who I am. Yes, He's the Elohim. Yeah. He's El Shaddai. Yeah, yeah. He's Jehovah Elion. Right, He's the Adonai. He's El Rohai. He's Jehovah Shalom. Yes, he is. He's Emmanuel. Oh, man, He's Jehovah Rapha. 
He's Jehovah testing you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. He's this mighty big God who knows everything and has everything packed down. He knows the past, the present, and the future. Do you really know who this God is? Do you know who this God is? Is there any reason then why you would not make any sacrifice if you have to stand there still waiting for God to unravel his plan to you. This big almighty God has a plan for you. He knows you. He knows you every step you take. Amen. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And I don't know when he designed the plan for you. If it's at the time of your conception, I have no clue when he does that. But he has a plan for you from that time to the end of your life. Yes. So is there any reason why you would ignore that big plan that God has for you? And say, oh God, I haven't figured out. I'm doing it my own way. Oh God. How could anyone do that? Does that make any sense to you? This big God who knows everything has a plan for you. And you don't want to make a little sacrifice to stand still and wait on the direction. Wait on what's your next step. Wait on what to do next in order to fulfill this plan for your life. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. Let's not be, let, let's not take our lives in our own hand. Let's wait on the direction. Let's wait on God for specific directions. And I just trust that God is speaking to your heart the way he's speaking to mine. I just trust and pray that you receive this word in your spirit. And that tonight will be a significant milestone in your life. That you would take heed. And if you were, if you thought you could handle your own life, and if you thought, oh, I have it all figured out. You will know that God has a plan for you. And you will say, I don't know anything. I'm going to wait on my God who has a plan for my life. Amen. I, and here I want to just say something about the altar, waiting on the altar. Uh -huh. A lot of times uh, the preacher would say, if you have a need, come up to the altar to pray. Okay. And sometimes I have been in churches where they say, let's tarry at the altar yes. for maybe sometimes almost all night. And I want to, nothing is wrong with that. Okay. Absolutely nothing is wrong with coming up the altar to pray. Because I know countless numbers of people who have received immense blessings coming up to the altar and waiting, waiting here Amen. up to this physical altar. Yeah. But I want to submit to you tonight that the kind of waiting that the psalmist 
David talks about is not waiting at a physical altar. Let's listen to how what Jesus said. Let's take a quick look at St. John chapter 4, verses 20 and 23. It says, our fathers, this is what the Bible says, just I'm reading that, this is a conversation between Jesus and the woman at the well. Yes, the lady right. said, our fathers worshiped in this mountain. Yeah. And now you are going to tell me uh -huh. that we must worship in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. That Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So that's a little confusing. But the, Jesus said, the, but the hour, I'm skipping a verse, but the hour, okay, our fathers worshipped in this mountain, yeah. and you say that the, that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Uh -huh. Je, in Jesus' response to that, he said, but the hour comes, and now is, when the true worshippers shall neither worship in this mountain or that, but the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. Therefore, worship is a lifestyle. Worship is not what you do when you come to church. Amen. A lot of people think that's, oh, I'm going to church to worship, and you do all sorts of other things during the week, but on Sunday, you run into church and start to jump around and thinking that's worship. My Lord. That's not worship. No. Worship is a lifestyle. Amen. A lifestyle. Amen. And so waiting on God. Is a lifestyle. Yes, yes. Waiting on the altar is a lifestyle. Amen. The altar is not up here that you're going to wait on. You are waiting. Your life is a life of waiting. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So you're not coming up here to kneel down or stand up or do anything to wait on God. No, no, no. You, this waiting is definitely a lifestyle of waiting on God. Every single day, waking up, going to bed, doing your dishes, whatever you're doing, that's the lifestyle of waiting. Waiting on God. Waiting on God. Hallelujah. I want to emphasize to you that our Christian walk is also a process. It's a process. Okay. And different people are at different stages of the process yeah. at different times. Amen. And here is what Peter says about that in, in, first, in 2 Peter 3, verse 18. He says, but grow in grace. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And in the knowledge of our Lord, of our Lord and Savior, Christ. Jesus Christ. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And like I said, every one of us is a different stage of that growth. So if tonight you're hearing me and you're saying, but I'm not there yet where I can just abandon my life on God. You are in a process, and God will bring you there. Okay. Don't beat up on yourself. Yeah. If you don't feel mature enough that you know how to abandon yourself to God, that's what this conference is all about. Amen. For you to get a little further on your journey. Amen. To know, conferences like this are not for entertainment, you Why know. 
It's for and it, it's not to stir your emotions either. Amen. Conferences like this are designed to give you information in your spirit, in your head and in your spirit, so that you can walk the Christian pathway. My Lord, amen. You know, we Pentecostals love to dance around and sing loud and get emotional. But I'm telling you, that's not what's going to get us in our Christian walk. I'm telling you, yeah. it's when you get the word of God in Amen. your heart Amen. and you live by that word that Amen. you get. Amen. You live by the word. So tonight, that's what this conference is about. To put you a little further along in your Christian walk. Amen. To, at the end of this conference, you should know how to abandon yourself on God. How to stand still and wait on God if you weren't doing it before. Amen. So, let us see. You might ask yourself. You might ask yourself. Do I really and truly want to let go of my life? You might be saying, God, but you know, you know, God, that I'm a, a control freak. God might be speaking to your heart now. And you're saying, Lord, you know I'm a control freak. You know I have it all together. You know I'm such an organizer and a planner. And I have all my schedules written down. And I know what I want to do next. And I have my goals that I want to accomplish. So God, what part do you want to play in that? I have them already. I'm organized. So I cannot afford to abandon myself and stand still to wait on you because I already know what's my next step. I already know. And then, so, so how can I really get into this complete surrender that you're talking in my spirit about? This complete waiting on God. This complete being still and waiting on God. Wow. This conference is for you. This conference is for you. We don't want to leave anybody behind. He wants to elevate you to new heights in Him. He wants to move you from where you are right now, where you think you have it all together, my Lord, my Lord. and you have it under control, and you're being successful right now. He wants to move you to the place where you trust in him for the direction because he knows the plans he has for you. He knows the plans he has for you. In order to understand fully what it means to wait on God, Will you listen to the voice, to the, the songwriter? The songwriter says, I give myself away 
so you can Hallelujah. use me. Take my heart, take my life as a living sacrifice. All my dreams, all my plans, Lord, I place them in your hands. I give myself away so you can use me. My life is not my own. To you, I belong. I give myself away. You see, before you conceived, God knew you. And like I said, I don't know what part when he came up with the plan, maybe the beginning of because he knows everything from the beginning to at the end. But your life is a whole part of his big plan. It's like a big jigsaw puzzle. I was working on a 500 piece. And that little part the puzzle is not complete uh -huh. until your little piece is put in. That's right. You are put in. So you have an important part in the design of God's world. Right. In the design of God's big plan, there is a purpose. There is a space for you. You don't know it. Only God knows it. And that is why we have to wait on him. Yes, amen. Yes. We have to wait on him. My Lord. Because um, I, I don't want to burst your bubble. Huh. But if you thought you were just here for yourself, that's a big mistake. Amen. You're here for the purpose of God. Yes. For the plan of God. Yes, amen. And there is a place. There, there are people whose lives you need to touch. In whatever way. God has called you to touch these lives. And he calls you. He fashions you in the way. If you, let's say you are some business, you, you, business entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. God fashioned you that way. Fashioned your mind that way. To fit into that space of the jigsaw puzzle. Amen. Amen. And he, he, he made you, and, and we like to call it your shape. How you know what God wants you to do, we call it your shape. The S is for your, um, your, your, spirit, your spirit, your spiritual gifts. Okay. What, is it, what is it that he has talented you with? What are your talents? And what is your heart? What, what, what makes you click? What motivates you? What lights your fire? What do you what do you like to do? And and you feel, oh, I love to do this, I love to, to do this, I love to um, do whatever it is, and you believe that it's just something you love. But that's how you were designed. God made you that way to fit into the puzzle of life. And so then it's your aptitudes. What do you have the aptitude for? What, what is it that you can do? And all of these things, all of these things come together to make you the person you are who God wants to fit in that little jigsaw puzzle yes. of his eternal kingdom building. Amen. Amen. 
my God. Is, does that blow your mind? That you are a part of God's eternal kingdom building plan. And you know, those of us, those who don't want to wait on God, God comes, it's like, it's like the angel is sent to the address, to your address, but you're not there. Return to sender. You, the, the person you marry is an important thing. And you're praying for this tall, handsome man or this beautiful lady. He come, God sends the person, but you are somewhere else finding somebody else. The angel looking around. <laughs> where, where is Jean? I don't see her to give her the package that's designed for her. Have to return to send them. And you miss out. You miss out. You miss out. So you see, brothers and sisters, how important it is to wait on the Lord. Don't go out there and do your own thing. Don't move without getting a command from God. Don't move. And I just, I can't really explain fully to you all of this and how to wait. But I want, I know the Holy Spirit will teach you teach you how to wait on God. And not until then, then and only then will you see the complete fulfillment of your life. Then and only then will your business, will you see your business flourish. When you wait on his direction, then and only then, thank you, then and only then yes. will you see Mrs. Miss Wright and Mr. Wright. All right now. Praise God. Then and only then will your marriage work. work. That's right. Amen. Then and only then will the job situation that you're in feel comfortable? My Lord, my Lord. Because maybe you're a misfit in that job and because you ran after it for some reason and you just grab it without finding out from God, okay. is this really the job I should take? My Lord, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So when you wait on your God, when you wait on your God, when you wait upon your God, you fulfill your destiny. You fulfill what God has shaped you for, what God has called you to do. You fulfill what God has called you to do. And I'm telling you, I just want to say one more time or you know I just don't want to blow your bubble but your life is worthless <laughs> worthless without fulfilling God's mission in your life Amen. worthless Amen. I'm telling you it probably seems as if you're being successful but you would have been so much more successful Amen. had you waited Hallelujah. on God. Hallelujah. 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 Are you willing to wait on him? I am asking you tonight to pause.
Posture your hearts. Posture your hearts to wait on him. Put your hearts in the place. Be still. Put your hearts in the place where you're going to say, I'm standing still and waiting on my God. Yes, Lord. I'm standing still and waiting on my God. And as you posture yourself, your hearts, this weekend, you're going to see that there begins to be a change in your lives. You will see that. When you come back on Sunday morning, we're going to see why David had such authority and spoke so firmly. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You're going to see what credentials he has. Why? How can David say all of this good stuff? How can he be so, so, so emphatic about wait, I say, on the Lord? We're going to see the experiences. And why is it? That we need courage. Why is it that we need courage? What did David experience that he knew that while waiting on God, because remember how long ago he was anointed as king. And how he had to wait on God. And when you look at all the experiences he had during that time, you'll see why it is that we need courage while waiting on God. While waiting on God. Are you willing tonight? Are you willing tonight? And, and like I said, it's a, it's, it's, a proper, it's a process or a Christian walk. You know, it's a process. So we're t I'm talking to myself, I'm talking to everybody. We need, because none of us, we're not perfect. Amen. Amen. Nobody's perfect. We, none of us has reached that place of perfection. No, not, no, not one of us. Amen. And so we all need to post our hearts this weekend to know how to wait on him. To, to, first of all, to be determined to wait on him. Amen. To be determined, to, to be resolute, Woo. to be intentional yes, about yes. waiting on God. Because it's not just gonna happen, you're not just gonna find yourself waiting you have to be intentional about waiting on God. Waiting on the Lord. Amen. Amen. Have to be. You have to be intentional about waiting at the altar. Amen. Hallelujah. So right now, I would that you make an altar right where you are. Because I personally am not allowing the opportunity of this weekend hallelujah, hallelujah. to pass me by. This weekend is not, I promise you, Thank you Lord. not going to find, leave me at the same place it found me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. It's not going to. So I am praying right now that that will be the resolute of each person tonight. Bow your heads. Make an altar where you are. And say, teach me, Lord, to wait. Teach me, teach me, teach me, teach me. 
Teach me, Lord, to wait. Teach me, Lord. You will see your life bloom and blossom. You will. You will. You will. You will. But on Sunday, you will hear about some obstacles in the way. Because it's not all a bed of roses. Make an altar right where you are and commit to God. I just want this weekend to be that kind of a weekend that catapults you at a, to a higher level in your Christian walk. A higher level. A new plane in your Christian walk. And you're going to see the difference in your life. You're going to notice the difference. The church is going to notice. Your family is going to see. Your co-workers, your, your employees. Everybody is going to see the huge difference in your life. When you go as a trend higher in your journey. In waiting on God. In waiting on God. In waiting on God. So allow the word to sink into your heart. Allow this word to sink into your heart. My brothers and my sisters. Allow the word to sink into your heart. And resolve right now. Beginning this minute. To stand still. To quiet your soul, to quiet your spirit, to be still and wait on God and hear from Him. And hear from Him. I need to see everybody's head bowed right now as you pray, as you pray, as you talk to God. If you choose to talk out loud, you can do that. But if you choose just to pray in your spirit, or just to whisper, it's between you and your God. It's between you and your God. I want nobody in the reach of my voice, both our media audience and those of you sitting in the congregation, I want nobody, be you a man or a woman, please, please do not let this opportunity pass you to tune in to the God who knows the plan he has for you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 he has a plan for you, hallelujah, wait on him, wait for the directions, wait on him for the next step, for the next step, what next to do, what's my next move, hallelujah. 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 Glory to the God. Wait on him. Wait on him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, 
And so we need to get your here and continue to wait. So let's say wait. Wait! Wait at the altar. Amen. We are to establish our altars. Amen. Let us stand on feet. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank everyone for coming out. Everyone and supporting the first session um, of this conference. Um, I'm delighted and I'm privileged to stand in your presence as well. Amen. Amen. As men, we are representing men. Amen. To support the ladies. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us go to the Lord and pray as we are dismissed. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your presence that is here. We thank you for your people that are here today. Amen. As we begin our this fashion to hear thus said the Lord, we know through your word of faith, coming by hearing and hearing the word of God, the instructions, the directives of God. We thank you, Lord God, even as we acknowledge you in all of our ways. Hallelujah. You promise that you will direct our steps. And so, Lord, as we come in this fashion, this weekend, we pray that you will direct our steps as we listen, to hear your instructions that comes from your word. Hallelujah. Your word is indeed a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Hallelujah. Direct our ways, guiding us, leading us, directing us, showing us the plans that you have for our lives. We cannot do it by ourselves, Lord. We're nothing, we're worthless. God, uh, just for the same to us. Our plans are worthless. Without your plans, without your direction, without your instruction, that come from your word, we pray in the spirit as we're able to leave this place. That your presence will continue to abide with us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody give you a praise in this house. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Somebody say it.